This program is rated MA. It contains adult themes, coarse language, drug use, horror, nudity, sexual references, and violence. sorry we are that that things got so fucked up with us and, and mr wallace when we, we got into this thing with the best intentions really i never oh i'm sorry did i break your concentration i didn't mean to do that please continue you were saying something about best intentions matter oh you were finished oh well allow me to retort What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? What country are you from? What? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of. They speak English in what? What? English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Yes. Then you know what I'm saying. Yes. Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. He's black. Go on. He's bald. Does he look like a bitch? What? Does he look like a bitch? No! Then why you try to fuck him like a bitch, Brent? I didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> were bigger than our stomachs. That's exactly what it is, pure ego. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Thank you for lunch. This what was delicious. Sorry we bothered you. Look, we all go way back, and uh, I owe you from the thing with the guy in the place, and I'll never forget it. That was our pleasure. I'd never been to Belize. Look, just out of curiosity, which casinos did you geniuses pick to rob? Bellagio. It's the Bellagio, the Mirage, and the MGM Grand. Those are Terry Benedict's casinos. Is that right? That's right. You guys, what do you got against Terry Benedict? What do you have against him? That's a question. He torpedoed my casino, muscled me out. Now he's gonna blow it up next month to make way for some gaudy monstrosity. Don't think I don't see what you're doing. What are we doing, Ruben? You're gonna steal from Terry Benedict. You better goddamn know. This sort of thing used to be civilized. You'd hit a guy, he'd whack you done. But with Benedict, at the end of this, he better not know you're involved, not know your names, or think you're dead, because he'll kill you. And then he'll go to work on you. That's why we have to be very careful, very precise, mm. well funded. Yeah. You gotta be nuts, too. And you're gonna need a crew as nuts as you are. Who do you got in mind? Saturday. We're uh, we're gonna go to Home Depot. Yeah, buy some wallpaper, 
Maybe get some flooring. Stuff like that. Maybe Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? Give me that thing. I'll do one. I'll do one. We gonna do one. Do one. Do one. Do one. Do one. Do one. Do you? Oh! That's a talented man. chance to get out of this alive. You and your nigger come out right now with your hands over your head, and I mean right now. Is this the marshal I have the pleasure of addressing? Yes, it is. You unarmed? Yes, indeed, we are. Marshal Tatum, May I address you and your deputies and apparently the entire town of Daughtry as to the incident that just occurred? Go on. My name is Dr. King Schultz. Like yourself, Marshal, I'm a servant of the court. The man lying dead in the dirt, who the good people of Daughtry saw fit to elect as their sheriff, who went by the name of Bill Sharp, is actually a wanted out outlaw by the name of Willard Peck with a price on his head of $200. Now, that's $200 dead or alive. The hell you say? I'm aware this is probably disconcerting news, but I'm willing to wager this man was elected sheriff sometime in the past two years. I know this because three years ago, he was rustling cattle from the B.C. Corrigan Cattle Company of Lubbock, Texas. Now, this is a warrant made out by Circuit Court Judge Henry Allen Laudamilk of Austin, Texas. You're encouraged to wire him. He'll back up who I am and who your dear departed sheriff was. In other words, Marshal, you owe me $200. <laughs> Check. You guys can get the tip. All right, everybody cough up some green for the little lady. Come on, throw in a buck. Uh-uh, I don't tip. You don't tip? No, I don't believe in it. You don't believe in tipping? You know what these chicks make? They make shit. Don't give me that. She don't make enough money, she can quit. I don't tip because society says I have to. All right, I mean, I'll tip if somebody really deserves a tip. If they really put forth the effort, I'll give them something extra. But, I mean, it's tipping automatically. Uh, it's for the birds. <coughs> I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they're just doing their job. You don't care they'd count on your tips to live? You know what this is? It's the world's smallest violin playing just for the waitresses. You don't have any idea what you're talking about. So it's working at McDonald's, but you don't feel the need to tip them, do you? Well, why not? They're serving you food. But no, society says, don't tip these guys over here, but tip these guys over here. That's bullshit. You just convince me. Give me my dollar back. Hey, leave the dollars there. All right, ramblers, let's get rambling. Wait a minute. Who didn't throw in? Mr. Pink. Mr. Pink. Why not? He don't tip. He don't tip? What do you mean you don't tip? They don't believe in it. Shut up. What do you mean you don't believe in it? Come on, you. Cough up a bucket, cheap bastard. I paid for your goddamn breakfast. All right, since you pay for the breakfast, I'll put in. But normally, I would never do this. Never mind what you normally would do.
Mr. Sims. You are a cover-up artist, and you are a liar. But not a snitch! Excuse me? No, I don't think I will. This is such a crock of shit! Mr. Sims doesn't want it. He doesn't need to be labeled still worthy of being a bad man. What the hell is that? What is your motto here? Boys, inform on your classmates. Save your hide. Anything short of that, we're gonna burn you at the stake? Well, gentlemen, when the shit hits the fan, some guys run and some guys stay. Here's Charlie facing the fire, and there's George hiding in Big Daddy's pocket. And what are you doing? You're gonna reward George and destroy Charlie. Are you finished, Mr. Slade? No, I'm just getting warmed up. I mean, the only class in this act is sitting next to me, and I'm here to tell you, this boy's soul is intact. It's non-negotiable. You know how I know? Someone here, and I'm not gonna say who, offered to buy it. Only Charlie here wasn't selling. Sir, you're out of order. Out of order? I show you out of order. You don't know what out of order is, Mr. Trask. I'd show you, but I'm too old.